Hello and welcome to another video. In this video we're going to be doing the third problem from Weekly Contest 384 and having briefly looked through it, um, I'm going to do the second and fourth problem in one video because it's the same thing with just a harder constraint. And the first one was just a basic matrix traversal, so this is kind of an interesting one to look at. So you have a zero index string array words having length n and containing zero index strings. You're allowed to perform the following operations any number of times. You can choose, this is a little bit confusing, um, but basically what they say is you can take any two words and any two characters within those words and swap them. Basically what they're telling you. So return an integer denoting the maximum number of palindromes words can contain after performing some operations. Note that i and j may be equal, but even if they weren't, like let's say you couldn't swap characters within a word, you could always swap characters between words and get them wherever you want them to be. So essentially, you can swap any characters in any word to be whatever you want. So the intuition here is you're basically given a character bank. And the character bank is all of the characters combined. And you can put the characters in any order you want in any word that you want. And the only constraint you have is every word must have like the, the length that it originally had. So this has to have four, this has to have two, this has to have two. But you can you can take all the characters in a bank and put them whatever way you want. So in this first example, they tell you how to do the swap. So like I said, since you can put characters any way you want, you can take four Bs, put it here, two As and two As. Similarly, in the second example, once again, you can put characters any way that you want. So you can take the C, put it in the middle here, and use two Bs or two As to make one palindrome, right? So something like A, C, A would be a palindrome. And then in the second one, you would have two Bs to make a palindrome. Or you could do B, C, B with two As would be fine as well. And the third example, you can see that all the letters are different, so you can't really build a palindrome. Um, so the only one you can build is a one letter palindrome. And there's a bunch of ways you can do it. You can use an A, C, D, E, F, but essentially you can only build one. So that's the first main thing to notice for this problem is we have a letter bank. We can make any word with those letters. And the main thing is just the lengths of the word that we have to be concerned about. So let's think about what we need to make a palindrome. And there's two kinds of palindromes, right? So let's define what we need for both. So there's an even length palindrome of some length. Let's just call this L. That means in order to do this, we need to have L over two pairs of letters that are the same, right? And that's the main thing you need to recognize. So to make an even length palindrome, let's say we wanna make a palindrome of length six. The first three letters can be whatever we want. Let's call it X, Y, Z. Then the next three letters have to also be X, Y, Z. And if we have that, you know, and also X and Y can be equal, Z and Y can be equal and so on. But essentially, if you have L over two pairs, so if our length is six, we need three pairs of letters, right? Then we can build an, an L palindrome of length six, so like this. So as long as we have that, we can do that. Now the second criteria is odd. Let's say this is length L. Then what we still need the L over two pairs and use anything we want extra for the middle. Right, so the only difference between odd and even, let's say this is length seven, is the left and the right have to be pairs. So you have to have three pairs of elements, right? So that's the same like X, Y, Z, Z, Y, X. And the middle can be anything we want, right? This can be like A, B, anything we want. So the middle element doesn't really matter. We just have to have the same thing, this L over two pairs. And so that's the key to solving this problem. Once you realize, okay, I have a letter bank and I don't care what letters I have. So for example, let's say I have, let's say I have some words, like I have like six A's, six B's, two C's, three D's or something. It doesn't really matter what are my letters. It only matters how many pairs do I have? And then how many like odds do I have? So in this case, you would have three pairs, three pairs, one pair and one pair. So we can write this. So three plus three plus one pair plus one pair that would give us eight total pairs. And then we have this one leftover letter. So that's essentially the variables we're gonna use. We're gonna have number of pairs and number of leftover letters, right? This like remainder. And once we know how many pairs we have and leftover letters, it's pretty easy. Like, let's say we wanna build, let's say we have like eight pairs and like five leftover letters, right? Just single digit letters. Um, if we wanna build a word of length 16, 
we know we need to use eight pairs and we have that. But if we want to build a word of length like 20, we know we need 10 pairs and we don't have that. And so that's kind of the idea to build. So we can write this down to build a word. We need some pairs and to figure out if it needs to be odd or even. So the main thing is a couple of things. The, the even word is pretty straightforward. If you're building an even word, you just check, do I have that many pairs of letters? If I do, then I can build it. Now for an odd, what should our strategy be? So let's say we're trying to build a word of like length seven. We need three pairs and one leftover letter, but we, we always wanna take that extra letter from here because we can't, these leftover letters, we can't use them in a pair. Right? Like, let's say we have some pairs and then we have like one A, one B, one C, one D, one E. We can kind of be greedy. And whenever we need that leftover letter for the odd length palindrome, we're going to pull from this from this letters. But but what if we don't have a leftover letter? Like, what if we only have eight pairs and we want to build a word of length seven? Then what do we do? So then you are forced to take one of the pairs and split it into leftover letters. So let's just say we have like pair of A's, B's, C's, D's, E's, whatever, right? And let's, so we take three pairs to build this. So let's say we take a pair of A's. So like A, B, C is gonna be our pairs. So pair of A's, pair of B's, pair of C's, put this here. But now we have to take one of our other pairs. Let's say we have a pair of D's and we have to take one of the letters from there because we have no choice, right? We don't have any leftover letters. So we're gonna use three pairs, but then from one of the pairs, we're gonna split it into two into two letters, which we're gonna take one of. So if we had eight, we actually need to use up four pairs here. And now we will have one leftover letter because we took one pair, took one letter from it, made the center, and now we have one leftover letter. And so that's basically the idea is for odd, for evens, very easy. How many pairs do I have? Do I have enough? And for odds, I will try to use leftover letters for the center if I can. But if I don't have those leftover letters, then I have to break a pair apart and put one of them into my word and one of them into leftover letters. So now the only question is, how should we build these words? Like I said, the only thing that matters is the length of the words because we can rearrange the letters any way we want. So let's say our lengths of words are like four, seven, six, two, one. So if you think about it, like what should we build? Should we build a length one word or a length two word first? Well, a length one word requires zero pairs and one leftover letter. And a length two word requires one pair, All right? So let's just go down here and kind of figure this out. So let's say we have this situation. Let's say we have a situation where we have some pairs and no leftover letters. Do we want to build a length two word or a length one word? Well, let's see what happens when we do either. So if we build a length one word, we will now have three pairs. Oops. We will now have three pairs and one leftover letter. And if we have a, if we build a length two word, then we will have three pairs as well and zero leftover letters. So to build a number or the number bigger than it, like one or two, we're going to want to build the smaller one first. So clearly one is better than two. Now, if one is better than two, um, well, actually maybe one and two might be the same, but, 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 but you know, for sure that two is never going to be better than one because you, you have to use up a pair no matter what, but if you have a leftover letter, then one is actually a lot better, right? Because if we have a leftover letter, then one lets us use that letter where like, let's say we had this scenario where we had zero in here, one, one could be built like this, but two can't, right? So if one is better than two, if n is better than n plus one, and obviously like two is better than three, right? Like two is better than three because two takes one pair and three also takes one pair and a leftover letter, it takes more letters. That means that also like two is better than four to build, right? Because two takes one pair, four takes two pairs. So a smaller even number is gonna be better than a bigger even number. And similarly, five or something will be better than seven because five takes two pairs and, and a leftover letter and seven takes three pairs and a leftover letter. So the idea is once we have these buckets and we have our pairs, we just wanna sort our lengths in increasing order and we wanna build the shorter words first because those take up the least amount of letters. And if we can build a short word, then we can build a bigger word, but we might be able to build more short words. Like let's say, let's say our lengths were like um, 10, 20, 
40 or something. And what if we had 15 pairs? So we had 15 pairs and no leftover letters. Well, if we built from the smallest, this would take five pairs and this would take 10 pairs and we can build both of them. But if we built the other way, this takes 20 pairs. So this wouldn't be good, right? Or even, or maybe, maybe we'd say like, okay, we don't have enough, so we'll try these. But what if we had 20 pairs here? Now, if we build this way, we can build these two. But if we build this way, we'd, we'd have enough to build this one, but then we wouldn't have anything left. That's kind of the idea is you want to sort, you want to just get like an array of lengths, sort them in increasing order. And then for the building of the words, you don't really care what letters you have. You just need to know how many pairs do you have? Because for an even word, you need L over two pairs. And for an odd word, you need L floor divided by two plus this leftover letter. And that's basically it. So I think it's kind of a cool problem. I'm not too hard and definitely makes a lot of sense. Once you realize this is a little bit confusing, once you realize this just means you can take any letter from any word, put it in any other word. So, so we can actually go through this like example one and example two and example three really quick. I'm using this strategy now. So let's do that. So for example one, we have four A's. So we have four A's, which is two pairs. So we'll have two pairs here. And we have four B's, which is two pairs. So we have four pairs and we have zero leftover letters. Now, remember, we're going to build words from longest or from shortest to longest. So this is going to be length two, length two and length four. So to build a length two word, we need one pair. So we can do that. And this will we'll have three left over. So this is done. Then to build a length two word, we have one pair. So that'll take one pair. We have two left. This is done. And now to build the length four word, we need two pairs, which we have. And this is done. So we were able to build all these words. So we were to return three. Now for the second example. So A has a count of two, which is one pair. B has a count of two, which is another pair. So we have two pairs and one leftover letter. Now our lengths are two and three. So remember we want to build a smaller one first. So two takes one pair. So we have two pairs. So now we have one left and this is done. And now this takes a pair and a leftover letter. And we always want to check, do we have a leftover letter before splitting the pair? We do have a leftover letter and we have the pair. So we have enough to build this. So this is going to be zero and this is going to be zero as well. Then finally, for the last example, we have every letter is unique. So we have five leftover letters. So we have zero pairs, five leftover letters and our lengths are one, two and two. So also you notice that if we can't build a word because we're doing this in sort of increasing order, if we can't build like this word, we're never going to be able to build the bigger one, right? Because every bigger word will use the same number of pairs and just more letters. So once we can't build one word, we can just stop and return however many we could. So, um, yeah, so let's see what happens here. So can we build a word of length one? Yes. Cause we only need one leftover letter. So we'll have four left over and we can build this. Can we build a word of length two? Well, we need one pair. Do we have any pairs? No, we don't. So we can't build this. So we just return the one that we could. And that's kind of the idea. So let's take a look at the code. Pretty straightforward. So you have a counts dictionary. That's just going to be a letter and a count, a length array, which is going to be the, the length of every word and a result variable, which, yeah, I mean, I guess you can have it. You could also just um, like enumerate your lengths and then what you can do is you can just whatever you can't build. So let's say you're just going through your words, right? Like let's say our word is like one, three, five, so on. And we can't build this word. This word will be at index three. So then we can just return three if we if we weren't able to build it. So you could do it that way. You could do it this way. It doesn't really matter. But essentially you go through all your words, you append the length of the word to your lengths array, and then you just take every character in the word and you add it into the counts dictionary. So then you'll have a total counts of every letter combined. So we're at the lengths of the word, because remember we want to build the smallest word first. And then we just calculate how many pairs we have and how many leftover letters we have. I called it odds. So pairs is basically just take every single value in the letter counts and divide it by two and whatever you have. So like, let's say a has seven, you have seven A's, you would floor divide by two, you get three pairs. So on. So pairs would give you all your pairs total. Odds gives you all your leftover letters. Same thing. Go through all the values in the letter counts and add one if you have if it's a um, mod two is one. Right. For every letter count, you can only have one leftover letter because if a letter has an even count, it won't have any leftover letters, and if it has an odd count, it will have um, L over two pairs and one leftover letter. 
So this is essentially what we're doing. So you can have a maximum of 26, I think, um, like leftover letters. Then you just loop through your lengths of the words and you calculate how many pairs you need and how many odds you need. So the pairs you need is just the length of the word divided by two. And the odds you need is the length of the word mod two. So if it's odd, you need one. If it's even, you need zero. And you just check. If I don't have enough pairs, then I can immediately just return however many words I made. Otherwise, I can subtract the pairs I need from the pairs I have. And I can check, do I also need the leftover letter? If I need the leftover letter, let me check if I have one. If I have one, I'll just use that. Otherwise, I have to check if I have any pairs left, and then I have to basically subtract one from the pairs and add one to the leftover letter because I'm taking one of my pairs, splitting it in half, putting one of the letter in the middle of my palindrome, and then putting the other letter in my leftover letters. And if I don't have a leftover letter or a pair, then I basically can't make this and I can just return. Then every word you can make, increment the result and return. So pretty straightforward one. Um, let's take a look. And you can see it's very efficient. Um, so we can quickly go through the uh, time and space. And we can also look here. So there are a thousand words and a hundred letters for each word. So essentially, first of all, to um, like worst case scenario, this is so let's say N is like the length of the words and L is the length of a word. So to go through every character will be N by L. To do this part here, then to sort the lengths will be n log n, so plus n log n. And then to get the pairs and the odds is pretty much row of one because this dictionary is only lowercase letters. So this is just only going through those. So these both are row of one. And then to go through the lengths is O of n. So the time is gonna be this and the space will be O of one because storing the, oh, actually let's, let's no, actually the space will not be over one. The space will be over one because we stored the lengths. Yeah, so the, so the lengths is not negligible. The le the count is negligible because you only have 26 letters, but this lengths can be, um. although actually technically, um, you could improve this, I think. Yeah, so what you could do, which I'm not gonna do, but because the length of each word is um, one to a hundred, Instead of storing these lengths in an array, you can store them in a dictionary of like key value pairs. So you can have like the length of each word and then um, how many of that of that length word you have. And that would save you a little bit because then the, the length of the word is only a hundred. So you would sort a hundred instead of a thousand. So that could save you a little, but realistically it's whatever, it doesn't really matter. So yeah, so we're just gonna say this is O of N space. You could have made it O of L space if you used a dictionary for um, the length of each word. Or you could even save even more, I guess, technically. You wouldn't even have to sort this. You can literally just uh, make an array of length, like 100 or 101. And every time a word has that has that length, you can store it in the array. So you'd make an array of length 101. And then let's say a word has length of like one, you would, um, or I guess, I guess a wor words only have length one through 100, so you can, so you can um, make an array length 100, and then for every time a word has a length, you can put your word in there. So that would save you a little bit. But yeah, I mean, it's gonna be small like optimization, so it doesn't really matter too much. But um, yeah, that's gonna be all for this one. So if you did like this video, please like it, and please subscribe to the channel. And I'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.